for contemplating other kind of action. I understand that the British and the Soviets are, are conferring at the present time, using it in a general sense, and uh, we are hopeful that a ceasefire can be obtained in Laos. We continue to be hopeful. That he has not been heard from since Monday or We have to consider whether there is any program now, regardless of its cost, which offer us hope of being pioneers in a project. Uh, it's possible to spend the billions of dollars in this project in space uh, to the detriment of other programs and still not be successful. We are behind, as I said before, in large boosters. We have to make a determination whether there is any effort we could make in time or money which could put us first in any new area. Now, I don't want to start uh, spending uh, the kind of money that I'm talking about without uh, making a determination based on half the scientific uh, judgments as to whether uh, a real success can be achieved uh, or whether, because we're so far behind now, uh, this particular race is... Uh, we're going to be second in in this uh, decade. No, I, uh, this is something that Prince President will determine in his own good time and announce in his own good time. Are discussions underway with the Russians preliminary to the possibility? I, I have no comment to make. Let's leave this to the president. Well, he, he did say the matter is under consideration and it is the president's decision. It has not yet been decided whether or not there will be one. Well, Senator, is this the first official word the committee has had on such a meeting? Yes, I have had no formal notice from any other source. This is the first time anyone in the administration has spoken directly to me or the committee. Senator, how do you feel about the possibility of such a meeting? Well, from judging purely from what I've read in the press and this morning, that it is possible, I don't know, but it still hasn't been made. Do you think this is a little early for such a meeting, sir? Well, that, uh, I wouldn't want to prejudge that, but I, I was a little surprised that it would come so soon, although I anticipated that sooner or later it would, there would be such a meeting. As has already been announced, the President has accepted an invitation from French President de Gaulle to meet with him in Paris from May 31st to June 2nd. Following discussions through diplomatic channels, which began last March, and an exchange of communications, the President and Chairman Khrushchev have agreed to meet in Vienna on June 3rd and 4th. The President and Chairman Khrushchev understand that this meeting is not for the purpose of negotiating or reaching agreement on the major international problems that involve the interests of many other countries. The meeting will afford, however, a timely and convenient opportunity for the first personal contact between them and a general exchange of views on the major issues which affect the relationships between the two countries. We believe we are strong militarily. We believe that our deterrent power is <coughs> sufficiently strong to accomplish its purpose. I don't want to, to make inflammatory remarks here, but I would certainly take issue with the uh, uh, 
indication that the Soviet Union uh, power is in, in excess of ours. I think Admiral Rickover is one of the world's outstanding authorities on nuclear reactors. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure I'd put him in that same category in the field of education. We, with our British and French allies, are here in Berlin by right and by obligation. We have a very strong reaction from the Berliners that they consider our presence here as a guarantee of their freedom. Furthermore, we have a duty in case of serious civil disturbances to back up the West Berlin police. And finally, if there should be a serious military operation, we would be, uh, come immediately associated with many others who are on our side. In other words, it's not going to be just these 10 or 11,000 that will be defending Berlin. That's It'll exactly so. And you can be sure in any event that the American soldiers here in Berlin will give a good account of themselves. The so-called Troika proposal flies in the face of everything we know about effective administration. But the real point of it is that a majority of the members of the United Nations, countries in Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America, would have a total of one vote among them in the executive direction of the UN. And that vote could be nullified by a veto. The United Nations would be powerless to act on any proposal that did not suit the purposes of the Soviet Union. Mr. Khrushchev made it very clear on Monday that he will continue to press the attack. There is no way that the Soviet Union can impose his proposal. This would mean an amendment to the Charter, which requires the consent of the United States and of the other permanent members of the Security Council. We would not consent, nor would the necessary two-thirds of the General Assembly. The United Nations will not destroy itself. no doubt that improving detection is possible. We already know of some major, major improvements, but these improvements all require major changes of the Geneva system and considerably greater access to the Soviet Union than contemplated in the current political negotiations. They require many more control stations and many more inspections than are considered politically acceptable at the present time. The real problem is to make improvements in the Geneva system which do not require major political reorientation. This is by no means an easy job, and its success is uncertain. For underground explosions, our greatest difficulty is concealment. We know that by exploding a nuclear explosion in a large underground cavity, the seismic signal can be reduced in strength about 300-fold, the so-called decoupling effect. Large decoupled explosions can be conducted without fear that the Geneva system will even detect them.